ஸ்ரீசக்கர வாசினி தேவி நமஸ்தே சிவகாம சுந்தரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ண சோதரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே பத்மதலோச்சனி தேவி நமஸ்தே பக்த பரிபாலினி தேவி நமஸ்தே பர்வத்து வர்த்தினி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே கருணாவிலாசினி தேவி நமஸ்தே கத்தியாயனி கௌரி தேவி நமஸ்தே கதம்பவனவாசினி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே சக்தி பரமேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே சம்புமன மோகினி தேவி நமஸ்தே சங்கரி கிருபாகரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே அன்னபூர்ணேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே அகிலாண்டேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே அபயப்பிரதாயினி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே அகண்ட பரிபூரணி தேவி நமஸ்தே சக்தி பராசக்தி தேவி நமஸ்தே அகில பரிபாலினி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே அனந்த ரக்ஷக தேவி நமஸ்தே சௌபாகியதாயினி தேவி நமஸ்தே சந்தான லாப் பிரதே தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே காயிபுவனேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ஸ்ரீ வித்யாரூபிணி தேவி நமஸ்தே சக்தி ஸ்வரூபிணி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே ராஜராஜேஸ்வரி தேவி நமஸ்தே அலை சோவி யாரோ திரிபுராசியா டுடே வில் ட்ரை டு பினிஷ் எயிட்டீன்த் அண்ட் நைன்டீன்த் சாப்டர் எஸ்டே வி ஹர்ட் பர்ஷுராம் அண்ட் தத்தாத்ரே டாக்கிங் வி லேர்ன் அபவுட் சமாதி nirvikalpa samadhi savikalpa samadhi difference between samadhi and sleep and uh, even he went on explaining that everybody experiences samadhi momentarily for a fleeting moment we all have experienced it and he gave examples like when somebody you are in love with that person comes and hugs you deeply and at that moment you just forgot you just forget everything your mind is completely engrossed in that loving moment and mind is enjoying you are happy so that is samadhi your mind was captured similarly when you are walking and suddenly you know a snake comes in front of you for a second all your thoughts stop and you're like so for that the that little moment everything stopped that is samadhi you're reading a book and you're fully engrossed in engrossed in the book you've forgotten the surrounding around you that is samadhi sleep is also like samadhi but in all this various situations there is some difference this kind of samadhi is not helping you find liberation the purpose of life is to get liberated this kind of samadhi is only causing you bondage and you do not know you are still living in ignorance so samadhi is like concentration is like deep concentration but you experience it concentration every day but that concentration which is keeping you in ignorance and which is binding you is not samadhi it is 
the examples given for you to just relate okay what it can be but real samadhi is when the mind is awakened mind has cut all this bondages mind has come out of ignorance that is samadhi concentration on ordinary things is concentration but concentrating on bhagwan with with such a intensity that you forgot the world you forgot the world and you forgot the body and you forgot everything diving deep down in that stage so when we sit for meditation we are very conscious when we go open the eyes the conscious mind is busy looking at things sometimes we close close the eyes but the conscious ear it hears a sound and immediately our attention is broken concentration get broken our legs start hurting and we start feeling the pain concentration is broken but in samadhi slowly 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 you go beyond these distractions so first is closing the eyes then after some time there are inner doors they just close you can't hear anything whatever is happening around everything is closed in samadhi first maybe half an hour 45 minutes you will feel the heaviness in the body because everything is becoming numb many times it happens you know when you sit your leg is numb the joints start paining but after after some time you will realize that you can't feel your feet it's gone that numb you can't feel it and you continue sitting in that position then that numbness will extend from your feet to your calf to thighs to waist sometimes you'll feel oh that whole part is not there only this much part is there then you go on practicing more then you realize okay you are not able to able to realize to feel your stomach also then slowly you will not be able to be able to feel your body also slowly everything is gone everything you can't feel anything and then all the energy has just come concentrated here in the beginning you may feel heaviness of the head you may feel you may feel heat you may feel cold you may feel what lot of things in the beginning now i'm talking about higher stage of samadhi but after and then but after a while those thoughts also will disappear then you will feel only darkness after a while the darkness will disappear beyond beyond the darkness it's like it's like you if somebody has seen the solar eclipse you know you saw the circle you know the sun circle and then there is a darkness so it's like a solar eclipse so you see the darkness but you see the light also but this darkness is not dark it's bluish because because that black is you know behind the black is the dark, is the is like the mirror you know they give the example of mirror so behind the darkness is the mirror of your consciousness and the darkness is the darkness of the mind and the mirror of consciousness is there so you can see the little golden light first and you can see bluishness in the beginning that this colors will be many colors okay i'm talking about state of samadhi when the mind is fully captured and you can sit there for long so i'm talking about higher so in the beginning black then the black will turn into some other colors maybe all the colors of the rainbow you will see then after some time you will see okay only blue then sometimes after some time when your meditation is so strong and you know the breathing will be stopping at that moment you will not even feel your breath okay the breathing uh, from one uh, breath to breath to another breath the duration is very long then you see golden and then you see a golden aura like like a ring light and in that ring light there is a bluish and after some time the bluish also dis dissolves and then the bluish light goes away and then only the golden light remains and that golden light what remains that golden light is like 
like millions of moons and suns arising together like that golden light remains if somebody that golden light itself is so blissful and peaceful just i, I told you the golden light it has the intensity of thousand a millions of suns arising together and the temperature of that golden light is millions of moons rising together sometimes you may actually feel i mean you may you may actually feel like like uh, what do you call it? like snow inside <laughs> you feel like snow like ice inside so that kind of chillness sometimes we feel body will not feel the chillness it, so it, it's all going in it's all going on inside but the body is not cold body you because you forgot in the body body you you not there in the body but those sensations because it is there in the it is there inside your consciousness so the consciousness is there the images have disappeared the brightness is there the feeling is there and the lightness is there lightness of your soul you are light your consciousness your only element of consciousness so that is there if somebody can go beyond this then slowly they start having different experiences now that i will not go in detail i'm just saying we started from samadhi uh, from sleep state to samadhi so sleep is like samadhi but it is useless and it is dark but in samadhi your consciousness is becoming pure and you are awakened fully awakened so all this thing he has explained i explained it i explained it in more, much more detail now parshuram asked one question you have spoken about samadhi and uh, this can be have uh, this can be achieved by wisdom somebody has to have the knowledge so how can you get the knowledge and those who have gotten knowledge they all have gotten have there are so many people in the world who have achieved this state stage of samadhi but can you explain more on this what type of aspirants they are tatatre tells see there are many types of aspirants wisdom is achieved in the course of birth by lowest aspirants there are three type of aspirants so one is low type of aspirants then middle type of aspirants and the higher type of aspirants so lower type of aspirants are those i'm talking so much about samadhi and i'm talking about so much of knowledge they know all of this but even after knowing all of this 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 lowest type of aspirant you do not want to know about it the best class of aspirants the aspirants those those who want to learn about samadhi and all they hear and then they immediately get into work they want to ascertain the truth and contemplate on whatever they have learned we have been learning this so many year times but how much effort are we putting to really see the truth of the statements if it is said in gita atma is there did we put an effort to 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 know where the atma is we have always been repeating yeah atma is there atma is there atma is there atma is there to the point we think atma is some third person we forget to say i am the atma i am the soul okay if i am the soul who how am i like how do i look okay i am that 100 100 part of the tip of the tongue okay where am i how do i experience myself so aspirants are many of the, many type like this you know so somebody is like no i have to know buddha was there buddha was like okay he saw somebody sick he saw somebody old he saw a dead person and buddha was like what is this really life is this what it is is this what going to happen to me also 
he has he till that time he had not seen anything his father had created a new city itself where all these people were you know kept if anybody falls sick quarantine them there if anybody is dying quarantine them there buddha had never seen suffering he was born a prince living a princely life till one one time he went out and he saw all this and he's like this is going to happen to me also everybody is going to die yeah everybody is going to die everybody will fall sick yeah everybody will fall sick everybody will turn old me also yes you will also turn old just this three statements for someone wow so many fireworks coming i don't know why <laughs> from the background <laughs> anyways just this this three statements he left his house to find the truth who am i why am i come why is the body going to get old why am i trapped in this body and if i die where am i going to go and from where did i come he went on this questions bothered him so much that he left everything and he went on into the search first class aspirant the middle class are like okay we know the truth is there yeah but we are enjoying the the world also yeah maybe not in this life maybe next life maybe we are working there we are okay so middle class and the lowest class they keep listening or they may not even or they may not even want to listen they'll be like keep quiet what are you talking just enjoy don't 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 talk all this to us so these are lowest class of aspirant they they are least interested in this kind of topic and janak says look at me i got this knowledge i was sitting relaxing with my wife and then suddenly i heard some people singing song of on liberation and that song attracted my mind and immediately i sat down into meditation and i experienced that bliss of meditation and then i realized this is what it is this is what we have to have so even though i am back in the world i am working like a king i am taking all these kingly decisions doing what not i am surrounded by all sort of luxuries but my mind is not into the luxuries because i have experienced that highest bliss which is inside and i keep meditating on that so even while i am working i am doing all this work i am in samadhi this samadhi the stage of samadhi or getting that stage of attaining the stage of liberation is like chintamani chintamani is a gem which can take away all your problems he says that is what the stage is but just as a man ignores the fact that he holds chintamani or a celestial gem that is capable of fulfilling one's desire in his hand a man can hold that and he does not know the value of it and he goes on begging food this is what the situation of people is they have the reservoir of bliss inside them but they they are looking happiness outside they waste their life seeking pleasures so ashtavakra for me such hankerings are done and uh, i always abide in the eternal infinite source of bliss within me enough of such worldly foolish activities they are useless labor i keep my mind inwards and i do my work just for the sake of doing he went on explaining wisdom can be achieved in the course of many births by lowest aspirants as for the middle class wisdom is gained in the same birth but slowly and gradually according to their aforesaid scheme learning the truth having a deep firm faith in the truth then meditating on that in meditation getting the samadhi for some time means getting getting the deep concentration and then getting the ultimate final samadhi which is natural samadhi where he has experienced the bliss and then comes sahaj samadhi sahaj samadhi means you are working but you are in samadhi the thought of yourself that you are this pure divine soul never goes away you never get carried away by the external things you while you are working in the world you may react but internally you know this reaction is just external internally i am the pure soul 
I've come from different world. I've come here to do some work. Do the work. Go back to that world. From where we come. The world of bliss. Manidvip. Goloka. That's our real address. So that person will work. But he's always in Sahaj Samadhi. Means to be unattached. Even while engaged in the activities of the world. So for all those people, these are the five stages. Learn the truth. Acquiring the knowledge. Second, having faith in this. Third, meditating. And then finally, taking that bliss of meditation, which is called Sahaj Samadhi, into the world. And, well, and do it. And um, yeah, practice it while you are in the world. Why fall into Nirvikalpa Samadhi without gaining the fruits of its wisdom? Even if he should experience a hundred times, it will not liberate the individual. Therefore, the momentary samadhis which, which people are experiencing in the world, it's useless. So if you really want to come out of it, get into that Nirvikalpa Samadhi. And what is the Nirvikalpa Samadhi? Where your mind is free from all thoughts of image, all thoughts, all images. Very important thing, you know, whatever we think is the source of our happiness, this person will give me happiness, that object will give me happiness. All of that he's saying is just a image in your head. Reality is something different. Reality is something different. You fall in love with some person and you think this person will give me love. You go for some years with that person. And you will see that love which was there in the beginning, the craving for each other, it slowly fades away. Still people love each other. They get married, they have kids, they have good families. Some people, they get married and then they get, they get divorced very soon. What happened to that love, that attraction? So your mind was perceiving this person will give me the happiness. But the same mind is now perceiving this person is the source of my unhappiness. Similarly, with things, we want this object, that object. Because the mind says, this will give you happiness. But when the object becomes a source of problem, oh, why did I buy this? I should not have gotten at the first place. So he's saying, think like this, O Brahmin, O, Brahmin, o Ashtavakra. Whatever I'm teaching you, just think of it. Take away all these images from your head and then dive deep into that into yourself and be eternally free. Satyadre said, after giving these instructions to Ashtavakra, Janaka said, uh, sent him away. Ashtavakra reached his own place and whatever lessons he got, he put it into his practice and Ashtavakra became Jivan Mukta. Thus we ended the 17th chapter, now we are going to the 18th chapter. Satyadre continued. Thus, pure intelligence, free from objective knowledge, has been proved to exist and it can be felt on many occasions in ordinary life. However, this goes undetected because people are covered up in Maya. That thing is there, your soul is there, your, that knowledge is there, but because of Maya, you are not able to understand it. So the, when the mind becomes pure, then you will know it. And what is the nature? It says awareness is it nature. You are always aware. When you have realized yourself, self means the soul. Again, this, this topics are very high, so sometimes it gets confusing. When you have realized yourself, its real nature is awareness. You will never forget it. You will never forget it. You will never forget yourself. So awareness is its nature. Therefore, it is always realized. For there is no other knower beside itself can be admitted. This thing called the soul or the self is just like the sky. It is spread everywhere. It is in everything that you see. 
whatever is created is all created because of this self the body is created because of the soul the creation everything is created because of this soul if the body and the creation are transcended and if the self is realized even once there ensues that wisdom that we eradicate ignorance and override the cycles of birth and death so now tatatare is coming to the point of moksha is explaining and is explaining moksha while in this body not after death people think after death he will go while you are in the body you you experience it how do you experience it remove it all these thoughts of me mine remember yourself for me the easier way is you are just a temporary traveler so when we are traveling right when we we meet so many people on the way and we enjoy some good time with them too we'll have good talks know about their life we know them but do we make any relationship with them no we are not attached to them i have traveled so many places i like traveling so for like i would i would hire a car for like 10 days and the driver is my only companion in the in the car and the driver goes on and, and you i just keep hearing their stories what all they have done in their life so many stories i have so many stories i know so many drivers with so many stories and then their life and then they will take me to some other places they will tell me stories of other places but once the travel is over 10 days give them the money and out next travel i go if they come great if they don't come no problem some other driver will come this is this is how our life is understand just like the travel always we have to think like that but we we want to tie up everything no 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 everybody whom we meet our so called dear ones are also our fellow travelers that's all that's all all of us have a permanent destination some of them have realized most of them will not realize most of them will keep traveling keep traveling keep traveling that's all in this unlimited cycle of birth and death some they are done with their journey not in just words mere words they really are done because they saw because what happens when we are suffering we are like oh we are done with this journey oh we are done with this journey because you are suffering but are you working towards coming out of that those who really come out they are not they have not come out because they are not making a statement oh we are suffering we are suffering in fact they are very happy because now they have tasted their real nature they know themselves they are full of awareness they know under all circumstances this body is just made up of light this body means the soul is made up of light it is blissful it is peaceful but as long as it is just trapped into it it's going to suffer do i want to get trapped again never forever free forever liberated how did that happen remove the layer of ignorance so one who can remove this layer of ignorance they will override the cycle of births and deaths so liberation moksha is not to be sought in heavens or earth or in the neither regions moksha is synonymous with self realization liberation moksha is not anything to be got in a fresh oh we'll get we'll we'll get it it is there all you have to do, do is remove that that dirt that's all on your consciousness it is already there it has to be realized such realization arises with the elimination of ignorance absolutely nothing more is required to achieve the aim of life moksha must not be thought to be different from the self self means the soul if it is a thing to be acquired that means 
its absence is implied absence before attainment is implied if it can be absent even once why should not the absence reoccur so then moksha will be found to be impermanent so moksha is not impermanent moksha is permanent so it cannot be absent moksha is equal to self realization soul is permanent it cannot be absent so where is this moksha located where there is permanence soul is permanent so moksha moksha means liberation liberation is self realization the popular idea that moksha is released from bondage meaning destruction destruction of ignorance but from where is this ignorance coming ignorance itself is a form of thought so all we do is remove the ignorance we investigate and we investigate on that thought and after investigation that thought will become meaningless dream is said to be real as well as unreal as long as we are inside the dream it is all real we had a axe in our hand and we were cutting a tree in our dreams the dream the dream tree was real the dream me was real the dream axe was real but in the dream and when i open my eyes where is the tree where is the axe and where am i okay i am this body all right <laughs> okay got up and so what was dreaming inside the subconscious mind was dreaming in the inside now when i opened my eyes i saw okay now get up now what is dreaming now the same subconscious mind which was active while i was sleeping now it has become a conscious mind and the same conscious mind is doing activities now feeling doing but the, all this work is being done by the mind and that active mind is now conscious mind is now thinking this is real this is real this is real but then everything is real unreal for even while it is seeing like we think we are we are seeing but we are not seeing actually we are not seeing beyond every experience seems to be real every experience is temporary but eventually this is just a picture it just goes away all your pains also went away new pains came all your happy happiness also went away new happiness came one who understands like this okay in my dream subconscious mind in my open eyes conscious mind the conscious mind is creating the picture of happiness and and the sadness and and meeting and separating and okay done with this picture i have seen this picture enough many and many number of times done with it i am not this mind the mind is impure mind is sad why is it sad i am not this mind remove this sadness because this sadness is also temporary how many lives i took i became sad for what all things i craved remove this sadness all these objects why is it sad because of the objects of what we perceive are going to be, bring happiness and those objects are coming and going so you see okay everything is changing change is only constant thing so keep your mind free it will come it will go it will come it will go this is the meditation things will for me you know when i meditate i used to meditate on this for many years when i was practicing my buddhism this is what buddha taught one thing and he was like who am i and buddha's method was so easy he removed all 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 because but again to go to buddha's method method first you have to know i have to come out of this so when you sit in meditation so many thoughts are going to come when you first sit in meditation eyes are closed you don't see anything okay you close yourself but the ears are hearing there is no doors here and every time a thought a, a sound goes into you your concentration is disturbed so you have to tell no this is temporary anitya this is temporary you have to negate 
and then you start to sit down body will be paining here pain there pain negate for me the 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 instruction which i used to give to my mind move on move on move on move on do not linger over any thought any pain any happiness any image anything that comes in your meditation move on move on this is just a picture move on dream move on it takes some practice it is easy to to make the body practice but the mind you know it will start giving images of god knows how many lives and you very well know in deeper meditations i know this person i know but where is this person person now deeper meditations everything is just coming out and then you realize my god my uh, the chip of my soul had so many things i am a 6 month old child and i am getting angry at somebody sitting in my mom's lap Six month old child getting angry at some face, and that face is coming, and I know it very well. So we think like that. Move on. All these are just images. Your past life experiences. Move on. All everything that you have seen, images, images, images. Every experience, images, images. images temporary 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 move on move on move on we do all these things after a while the mind will just stop because you have not sat down on anything that it is providing you it just it it it, it won't give anything it's done because a mind's real nature is to give you happiness let me understand let me make you clear mind is given to you to give you happiness that is the real real nature of mind but for years for births after births you have only trained your mind to give you happiness in the images that you carry in your fan in your world of fantasy this will give me happiness when in meditation when you when you have told move on temporary move on temporary move on temporary the mind now knows all these images is not giving me happiness nothing and then after a while all the images will stop and then what remains is the pure state of bliss you are out of the dream of life you are in your full awareness then when you live in this world you live with full awareness you've come out of the dream you know every relation everything 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 you know it is just a dream so moksha or liberation is defined as a steady glow of the soul in perfection so many definitions of liberation datatre gives to parshuram you realize you are one with the universe you re you realize is the same consciousness going everywhere you are just a conscious being in the world is a conscious place that's all and that realization is called moksha parshuram heard all of this and he asked further sir whatever you are saying i am able to understand but it gets confusing at times just as ob objects stand apart from light so the universe seems apart from that conscious intelligent thing that you are talking you are saying okay the world is apart you saying everything is just pure consciousness but we are seeing everything is apart you are saying in meditation i can we can realize but when we really open and we try to apply practically 
everything just looks okay <laughs> real experience does not re reveal the identity of the two what you are saying right now and janaka also spoke about the samadhi that samadhi is a state when you know mind is very pure and it is identical with the self and uh, janaka is also saying that this knowledge destroys ignorance how can that be the self mind is always taken to be the faculty with which the self functions in the super material planes so scriptures also admit that liberation and bondage are only the attitudes of mind so how can the mind be the self self means the soul as well as as its faculty is it not equal to hallucinations like people sometimes thinks the rope as a serpent so that is an hallucination still again unreal images cannot serve any useful purpose and this world is full of if according to you this world is full of unreal images but then there is some purpose so <clears throat> you are telling me to see as unreal but how to assert it to be unreal please tell me that and if the world itself is unreal then how does the unreality happen to distinguish between fact and hallucinations in the affairs of life still more how does everybody happen to have the same hallucination of mistaking the unreal phenomena of reality please explain it to me datta tere datta tere said you have done well parshuram to ask this questions but you are asking the same questions again and again although not for the first time already janak has explained you have explained you so many times but you are still asking it no worries a student should ask as many number of times the answer has been replied by janak himself clear your mind of all the thoughts then you will see as it is you are asking me everything is unreal so that means what i what what i have taught you 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 have just heard it so the real answer for this would be you heard it now contemplate not uh, contemplate on it and then start practice practicing it but still since you have asked me again i'm going to say the same thing consciousness is one and non dual and it shines everywhere and just meditate on this fact that the cognizer and the cognized objects are seen in dream also even a blind man he may not have eye but he can perceive the object so how is that person a blind man seeing you said everything looks real from the eyes because you are seeing but the blind man is not seeing anything but for him also there is a reality so what is it that is perceiving whatever he is perceive your perceive you saw like you know you saw an elephant you will know how the elephant looks what will the blind man perceive in his head about the elephant he has not seen it but he has some perception of that elephant right the mind is perceived so everybody is perceiving the same truth is appearing different so the blind man even without sight perceives objects and how can how does he do so unless mental mental perceptions can anything be known at any time or any place in the absence of the light of mind similarly nothing is cognizable if it lies beyond the light of this cognizing principle for the same reason i am saying your soul is your mind your con and soul is consciousness and consciousness is mind when the mind becomes pure the consciousness is pure and then you get self realization if the mind is impure your consciousness is impure and you are far from self realization and whatever you say is the is related to the self 
is all unreal. Just as an axe was created in dream for felling a tree, which is the purpose for which it was designed, so is the mind said to be the faculty for giving perception. But Rama, a faculty can only be used for some same degree of reality as the action itself. For, for was anyone injured at any time by a human horn? The action and instrument must clearly be of the same degree of truth. So Rama, what you think is mind is separate from the self? No. The self is extended as the mind. And when you achieve that pure intelligence, that pure intelligence is quite un unblemished and other faculties are just mere fabrications for enabling transaction to continue. So this is Samadhi. I shall explain to you further. This self or the soul is nothing but space, as vast as the space. The Habais find in space the self. Her transcendental majesty, Tripura, she is the one who has become the space and who has become the soul. The diversity in the shape of men, animals and other phenomena is herself. Her majesty, the absolute truth, remains always aware of her perfection and oneness. Though herself immutable, she appears mutable to her own creatures, just as a magician beguiles the audience with his tricks, but remains himself undeceived. That Tripura, she is light, one without a second. Yet she, yet she appears divided to her own creatures because of her illusory energy. And that illusory energy is called Maya. Maya is making things appear unreal. Second-hand knowledge of the self gathered from the books or gurus can never emancipate a man until his truth is rightly investigated and applied to himself. She is the transcendental consciousness creating all and she is the essence of all. She is pure radiance. She is the Atma, Shakti, so the, the energy of the soul. Nobody can shine if it is not her. Her presence makes everybody shine as pure intelligence. So, I am explaining to you now. You have got this knowledge. But this is just bookish. You have to investigate the truth and go beyond this wheel of Maya to understand what she is. I tell you that, that mind and consciousness are just one and the same. The only difference, we call it as mind, the soul and the mind are the same. Soul is consciousness, consciousness is equal to mind. Our restless consciousness is mind. A peaceful consciousness is soul. Soul is always peaceful. Like, it's like if somebody is daydreaming and in his daydream he is seeing that some enemy has come, the enemy is harassing, the enemy is be beating him. So I am just, in my daydream, I am just seeing, oh, somebody will come, somebody will hit me, somebody will, somebody is in the room. Some people get that fear, somebody is in the room. Nothing. There's nothing in the room, but there, somebody's in the room. They may beat me, they may strangle me. So the restless mind. So that is mind. But for somebody else, nobody's there. It's all peaceful. So a peaceful mind is the presence of, you know, it, it indicates, okay, this is soul. So soul and mind are same. Consciousness and mind are same. But restlessness divides it. It says, okay, restless, now this is called mind. Peaceful, now it is called consciousness. So one has to understand this and one has to come out of this 
Venezuela said one more thing that whatever you call is bondage, bondage is because of the presence of mind. So he says, Oh Parshuram, cut this off. The bondage of mind. Uncertainty. That is the concept of mind. And it is, it is fearful hallucination. Cut it off. Even the best of the man cannot find release by any amount of efforts unless their thoughts of bondage is destroyed. What is bondage? Nothing can mind you. Nothing can mind the consciousness, the pure soul. It is just a thought. To imagine the self is shackled by mental projections. To imagine that the fire reflected in the mirror can burn it. There is absolutely no bondage beyond the foolish certainty that you are bound. And the difference of entity created by mind. Unless these two blemishes are washed away by the holy waters of investigation. So he's saying, think, think, think. Investigate. Remove that. If you do not work towards it, neither Brahma nor Vishnu nor Tripura, goddess of wisdom, nobody can help you if you do not help yourself. Therefore, Rama, remove these mental bondages and remove these thoughts of difference. Remove these hurdles and remain eternally happy. Eternally happy. Remove this and that. Eliminate everything and remain happy. Come out of this hallucination and remain happy. I will now tell you about jnanis, three types of sages who are knowledgeable, who know knowledge. Jnanis may be classified as the best, the middle class and the lowest. Of these, the lowest, they know about all these topics, what we spoke. They know about self. They know about soul. But they are influenced by the, pay, the, by the pains and pleasures accruing to them because of their past karmas. So they have the knowledge. But they are not ready to apply it. So they are lowest. Then there are other knowledgeable people who know the knowledge, who are stuck in this world. Everything is very attractive. They know the truth, but that this attraction is not the right attraction. I should not be here. It is unreal, but they cannot come out of it. But they are working towards it. So they are medium type of jnanis, knowledgeables. And then there are highest type of knowledgeable people, just like Buddha. They... When they see all these things, they start working. And jnanis of the highest order are never detached from the enjoyment of their bliss. Even if confronted with the millions, million times more prarabh, prarabh means previous karma, they are not surprised at the most unnatural things. They are not deluded by miracles. They are not elated by greatest pleasures. They are never depressed by worse situations. They are always peaceful and calm. Although they may appear like common folk. So the lowest type of knowledgeable person, he is always worked up. He has the knowledge, but he is not working towards it. So he is always in tension, always depression, frustrated. The second type is in between. The third type, he knows. He is working like any other common man. Up and downs of life are happening. Internally, he is happy. He is not reacting to each and everything. These differences, due to the differences in their, are due to the differences in their intellects and to the degrees of development of their wisdom. Their activities depend on their predispositions as determined by their past karma. But all their actions are like those of a drunken man. Thus, we ended the 18th chapter. Now, chapter 19 is very important, so I'll take some few more times. I have told you three prayers here. Is a little longer. He will tell more things. So Dattatre spoke like this about three jnanis. Now Parshuram asked, 
regarding the activities of the gyanis he said gurudev please tell me according how intellects you said intellects differ differ according to the stages of gyana and they are connected to their pre previous karmas he said yes you said moksha is simple unfolding of the self and is alone to be sought how can it be dependent on stages of development according to mental predispositions do the methods also differ in the same way dattatri replied yes i will now reply i will now tell you the secret of all secret there is no difference in the methods nor does the gyana differ in that the fruits differ according to the grades of accomplishment so everybody appears to be gyani there are so many knowledge people everybody speaking on their way in their own unique style but not everybody is accomplished because this accomplishment extends through several births and not and on completion gyana unfolds easily itself degree of effort is according to the stage of incompleteness brought over from past births however gyan is internal gyan means eternal knowledge knowledge is eternal and no effort is really needed okay gyan gyan means knowledge is eternal no effort is needed what do you mean by that well you are pure soul and soul is full of bliss and soul is self cognizant so why are you not able to realize because of the covering from where has the covering come because of your uh, karmic impressions from where has those karmic impressions come because you have been doing that same thing for so many lives so the one who is very much into this karmic impressions he has to do more hard work the one whose mind is very pure for him there is no hard work he can very easily do it so he is saying the degree of efforts is according to the stage of incompleteness brought over from past births however gyan is eternal and no effort is really needed because the knowledge is already there gyan is already there then there needs no accomplishment gyan is pure intelligence <clears throat> our intelligence is covered but for gyani intelligence is not covered by illusion energy the gyan the knowledge is same as consciousness which is ever self radiant what kind of kind of effort can avail to disclose the eternally self resplendent consciousness what is coating this radiant consciousness he says vasanas our infinite lust dispositions the vasanas the infinite lust is coating this radiant soul this radiant soul full of knowledge eternal knowledge it's like i give you a crystal and that crystal can fulfill all your desires but you don't know the value of the crystal you just close your hand first of all the crystal will not be able to show its light second you do not know it can fulfill the desires so you have the crystal it cannot show you the light and it cannot fulfill and it can fulfill a desire but you are ignorant you are just going on begging this is the situation of people in the world they have all the knowledge within themselves but yet they are going here and there in search of true knowledge there all the intellect everything is there the gem is enclosed within he says that is to be only reached how do you do that how do you so the only way you can do is first wash out all the vasanas you have all those that you carried from the past lives and this life wash out the vasanas wash out the lust how do you do that by your thinking discrimination wisdom and then open it up and you will find that gem inside you the gem of your soul full of sachidanand therefore you see rama all efforts are to be directed up to cleaning up the mental impressions of predispositions intellects are the cumulative effects of the predisposition acquired by karma effort is necessary so long as the predisposition continue to sway the intellect the dispositions are countless but i shall enumerate a few of them they are roughly classified into three groups aparadh 
means fault karma action and karma means desire the first disposition which is apradha is because one does not believe in the teachings of the guru and the holy books this can and if one when does not when one does not associate with holy people holy books and gurus definitely they are going to go to go down misunderstandings of the teachings due to assertiveness of or pride is a phase of diffidence and stands in the way of realization for learned pundits and others so association with the wise and the study of the holy books cannot remove this misunderstanding they maintain that there is no reality transcending the world even if there were it cannot be known if one claims to know it is an illusion of the mind or how can the knowledge make person free from misery or help his emancipation so there are many groups like that who talk like this if somebody associates with them they cannot come out of this fault aparad vasana and that's why they are suffering even though they can be liberated but they cannot become liberated because they do not have faith then there are other type of people karma vasana they they understand the teachings they are well taught they grasp the teachings but their minds are too too much cramped with predispositions to be susceptible to subtle truths they from the second group the victims of past actions unable to enter the stage of contemplation necessary for analyzing the vasanas so they'll keep on doing work one work work after another they're fully into that they're not working towards their self realization they know it all but they don't work the first category does not have faith the second category has faith but it is not working then there is a last category the third group and that that, that category is kam vasana means they are victims of their desire and they are always obsessed with the sense of duty we have to work we have to work we have to work desires are too many too numerous to count he gives example you can count the stars but you cannot count the desires of a person <laughs> maybe you can count the the specks of dust but you cannot count the desires of a person a person who has so much desires it is very difficult for them to remove this covering so if somebody has all these three problems one no faith in the scriptures second working endlessly like a donkey third knowing the truths but so many desires are just carrying you away from the real truth it is very difficult to give emancipation liberation to them the person who is shielded by desirelessness who this who has no passion for anything anymore and that person is safe from the wiles of the monster of desire and that person alone can rise to happiness therefore i tell you that the all the efforts are directed towards the eradication of these vasanas or these innate tendencies the first of them that is apradha vasana the fault comes to an end when one respectfully places himself and his faith in the holy books and the guru the second that is karma vasana may be ended by divine grace which may which may descend on the person in this birth or in any later incarnation there is no other hope for it the third must be gradually dealt with dispassion discrimination worship of god study of holy scriptures learning from the wise investigating into the self and so on over efforts to overcome these obstacles are more or less according to the obstacles as greater or lesser the most important of the qualification is the desire for emancipation nothing can be achieved without this desire that i want to be liberated i'm done study of philosophy and discussion 
on the subjects with others are thoroughly useless. It will be just like a bookish knowledge if you don't have the desire to liberate it, to get liberated. For that mat for the matter of that, one may hope I'll get salvation by study of scripture, but it is not. The study of philosophy in the absence for a longing of salvation is just like dressing up a court. Again, Rama, a casual desire for emancipation is also vain. Such desire often manifests on learning of the magnificence of the emancipated state. So just casually, okay, I'll read it and I'll be no, 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 not happening. The desire has to be very strong and abiding if you want really the fruits of liberation. And not only desire has to be strong, you have to put efforts for the accomplishment of the purpose. Your strong desire and your hard work, then you get the fruits of emancipation. You have to start, then he says, you have to feel it just like somebody burning, you know, scalded by fire. He will immediately run for some soothing medicines. He will not waste one minute of time in other pursuit. If you're burning, if your body is burning, you'll run. Give me some medicine. Give me some medicine. Similarly, you are living in this world burning day in and day out. If somebody understands that and then runs, give me that medicine. I really want to come out of this burning, forever burning. Then that person, and when he puts his effort, will get emancipation. What's the point of talking so much if the desire is not there? Then one will start by discarding pleasures because you know that these this pleasures are the impediments to my progress. He developed this passion and then desire for emancipation, which then grows in strength. This makes man engage in the right effort in which he becomes thoroughly engrossed. After these stages are passed, the most unique consummation takes place. When the Tatre finished, Parshuram was bewildered and then he asked, Guruji, you said earlier, you had mentioned three points. You said satsanga. Then you said the, the divine grace. And now you are adding dispassion. You told, I whatever we had the conversation, you told three things. Satsanga means association with the wise people, the saintly people. Divine grace and dispassion are the prime factors for attaining the highest aim of life. Out of all these three, which is the most important? Satsanga, divine grace, or dispassion? Dattatraya says all of the three, all the three of them connected. One comes after the another. Still, I will tell you the root cause of it. All listen. Tripura, the goddess, her transcendental majesty. The absolute consciousness, being self-contained, originally pictured the whole universe in her being. Like images in a mirror. She became individual things. She is known as Hiranyagarbha, the creator. And considering the predisposition of the egos enclosed in the egg, she unfolded the scriptures. So, so she created this golden globe from which we have come. And she knew when everybody will come out, they will have thousands of desires which they want to play. She opened a ground, playground for us. All the kids are coming out from the Golden Globe here in Nagarva. And now everybody wants to play and enjoy. So she created all this material and then she knew after creating the game, they will be lost. And they will be lost and they will be suffering. So they should know how to come back. So she created this Agam Truths. She created the Vedas. She unfolded the scriptures the reservoir of sublime truth for the fulfillment of desires. Since every embryonic individuals were full of unfulfilled desires, Hiranyagarbha began to think out of the out of the means of fulfillment. And then the jnana, the knowledge was given to Brahma. Brahma elaborated a scheme of cause and effect, actions and fruits. And consequently, every individual were born Later to revolve in that wheel of cause and effect. They take different shapes and are placed in different environments consistent with their predispositions. 
after passing through innumerable species, the individual involved as a human being, owing to the merit he has accumulated, at first he will take selfish pursuits. With growing desire, he will seek the unobstructed fulfillment of mighty ambitions. But in due course, the methods advocated in holy books will be adopted because he's, he's, he has so much desire. So where do I fulfill my desire? So he will go and look at all the scriptures and the scriptures are filled with all these different methods how to fulfill your desire. So he'll keep on doing that. But no matter how many desires he fulfills, failures are inevitable. He will fail. And when he will fail, he will disappoint himself. So failures are inevitable everywhere. Disappointment result. And then expert advice is sought how to come out of these problems. And such advice will be forthcoming only from a man living in an unbroken beatitude who is self-realized. Such as divine sage will in due course initiate the seeker in divine magnificence. After the initiation, the initiation happens because of accumulated merits. The initiates accumulated merits reinforced by association with the gurus and the saints and given and coupled by divine grace makes him persist in the course and gradually take him takes him step by step to the highest pinnacle of happiness so the whole scheme was like that the game was created people will do people want to fulfill their desires then they will fail then disappointment, then read the scriptures, then associate with the holy, and the holy initiate them. And then after the initiation and the satsanga keeps happening, then they develop dispassion. And after that, gradually they'll be putting, they'll be put on the highest pinnacle of happiness. Now you see how association with the wise, now he gives. So out of all of this Parashuram, association with the wise, satsanga, 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 is said to be the root cause of all that is good. This happens. And how do you get association with the wise? Happens partly because of the merits of the person and partly through his unselfish devotion to God. But always as if by accident, like a fruit which has suddenly fallen from the wide. So he has done some good karmas in the past and he had devotion in, in God and then suddenly he meets this great person, great, great saint, saint, and he feels, oh my God, I just got a fruit in my hand. He says, no. The reason was there, but he does not realize. Therefore, the goal of life, being dependent on so many causes, there is a variety in its attainment, either according to the intellect or the predispositions of the per person. The state of the jnani similarly differs according to his uh, efforts that have been great or less. When there is more vasanas, Proportionally, efforts, higher efforts have to be made. The glimpse, he is whose mind, he whose mind has been pure by good deeds in successive past incarnations, gains supreme results quite out of proportion to the little, little effort he may make, just like Janaka. The glimpse of a jnani, of jnana, gained by one whose mind is crowded with dense vasanas, accumulated in past incarnation, does not suffice to override one's deep-rooted ignorance. Since so such a one is obliged to practice samadhi, nididhyasan in successive births for effective and final realization. O Parshuram, there are apparent differences in the characteristics of jnanis because of their different attitudes and different aspects. You will see difference between Brahma, you will see difference between Vishnu, you will see difference between Shiva. All of them have the knowledge, but because of their nature, they are different. Similarly, me, my brother Durvasa and Chandra, we all three are brothers. I have no interest in, I'm a, I'm a Vairagi. My brother Chandra, he is very, he has so many wives. And my brother Durvasa, he has so much of anger. So we all have different nature, but we all are Gyanis. So every Gyani is different because of their nature. Similarly, there was Jad Bharata, who was different. Vyas is different. Shukadev is different. They are all Gyanis, but because of their attributes, they appear to be different. And then he went on saying, 
Of the three typical vasanas mentioned, the one of action is the most potent and is said to be in ignorance. Those who are best, who are free from all the vasanas and particularly from the karma vasanas, if free from the fault of mistrust of the teachings from the, of the master, the vasana due to desire, which is not very serious obstruction to realization, is destroyed by the practice of contemplation. This passion need not be marked in this case. Such people need not repeatedly engage in the study of scriptures or receiving the instructions from master, but straight away pass into the meditation and fall into samadhi. They live evermore as liberated beings. Sages with subtle and clear intellect have not considered it worthwhile to eradicate their desire, etc. by forcing other thoughts to take their place because their desires do not obstruct their realization. Therefore, their desires continue to manifest even after realization. So there are sages who are realized. You will see them like normal people having desires. But their desires is not obstructing their realization because they have realized the realization is always there. They are said to be emancipated and diverse-minded. They are also reputed to be the best of jnani. Rama, he whose mind clings to the ignorance of necessity of work, cannot hope for realization, even if Shiva offers to instruct him. Similarly, also the person who has the fault of marked indifference to or understand misunderstanding of the teachings will not get emancipation. But somebody who is who is not affected by these vasanas and much more so by desires or by ambitions and if he is repeatedly hearing the holy truth discussion on the same contemplates on it will surely reach the goal such a sage's activities will be small because he is entirely gross, engrossed in his efforts of realization a sage of this class by long practice and rigorous discipline controlled mind he will eradicate all the predispositions, even though if he may he may belong to middle class, but he'll be also freed. The last class and the least among the sages are those who practice and whose practice and discipline are not perfect enough to destroy the mental predispositions. Their minds are still active, and the sages are said to be associated with their minds. They are barely gyanis and not jivan muktas. So they appear to share the pleasures and pains of life like any other man. And will continue to do so. Prarabd is totally power, powerless. Past karma is totally powerless with the middle class who have destroyed their mind with continuous practice. So mind is the soil in which all the karmic reaction of the past is there. So one who is working hard on it, they will destroy it completely and they will be free. So in this way, he has explained different type of jnanis, how to get free of them, and he has spoken about Samadhi. We'll end it up here. Few more things. I'll take it up tomorrow. And hopefully tomorrow we will finish Tripura Rasya. There are three more chapters remaining. We'll, but some of it is a story. So stories are easy to understand. All right. Jayanti is writing, Karma Vasna can only be eradicated by divine grace. But how can we help self in this birth ma to reduce this Karma Vasna? Karma can be done by divine grace. So you have to do the right karma. What is the right karma? Gita Bhagavan taught, surrender everything to me. Yat karo shiyat jo shiyat asna shi jo shiyat tat krushma darpana. So we are, we are doing karmas all the time. We surrender to Krishna. And Krishna will wash away all the karmas, he will burn away all the sets of karmas. That is the way. Okay? So divine grace occurs when we surrender the karma to Bhagavan. Alright. So we will see you tomorrow. Have a Lalita Mai day and Lalita Mai night. Uh, night. Jai Shri Krishna. Thank you, Ma. Thank you.